Hello, everyone, and welcome to Ecole Polytechnique's webinar. Uh, thank you for your interest, and thank you for joining us. My name is Pamela, and I am in charge of the promotion of the different Masters of Science and Technology. And joining me today is uh, Patricia Griffo, Lily Tukto, uh, Natalia, and uh, Ekaterina. So I will let them introduce themselves. Hi, everyone. My name is Lily Tukdo, and I'm the admissions manager for the MSAT program. Hi, everybody. I'm Patricia Griffo. I am um, the academic director of the MSCT uh, Economics for Smart Cities and Planet Policy at the Colby Technique. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Yuka Tidima. I'm a second year student in this program. Hi, everyone. I'm Natalia, and I'm also M2 in the Master of Science and Technology in Economics for Smart Cities and Climate Policy. Thank you. Uh, so as you know, today we're going to present to you Ecole Polytechnique, as well as the MSCNT in Economics for Smart Cities and Climate Policy, as well as its admission process. Uh, just for information, before starting, we will take all of your questions at the end of the presentation. So please feel free to use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to ask anything related to the presentation and ask your questions to Natalia and Ekaterina, which are students uh, from the program. So what is Ecole Polytechnique? Um, a few key facts about the school. Uh, for those who don't know, Ecole Polytechnique is the French leading institute uh, in science and technology, based in Palaiso, which is about 20 kilometers away from Paris, uh, and was created in 1794. We are one of the best world university for students' employability, and we are very, very proud of that. And we have about 3,600 students coming from all over the world. Um, so about 40% of international students, but also 40% of international teachers. Uh, and we offer different undergraduate and graduate programs from the bachelor to the PhD. The student life at Ecole Polytechnique is very important. Uh, students can take part in almost 250 associations in cultural, artistic, social, scientific, and sporting activities. The campus itself offers many services, such as banks, a hairdresser, a post office, therapists, um, and lots of events are organized throughout the year. Professional events, student events, um, and cultural events to allow students to make memories enjoy their time on campus, but also network and be prepared for their future career. So I will let Patricia present to you uh, the Master of Science and Technology, and then Natalia and Ekaterina will testify. Thank you very much, uh, Pamela, for this presentation. Um, so what is a Master of Science and Technology? Um, well, in, it is a two-year program. Uh, you are uh, students uh, en enrolled, are, uh, enrolled for uh, both industry-oriented program and an English uh, teaching with world-class professors and industry leaders. Basically, what we, what we aim at offering at Ecole Polytechnique is a, a program that can um, allow you to have a multidisciplinary training on a variety of uh, uh, subjects ranging from science, technology and engineering course to management of innovation and entrepreneurship courses, and as well humanities, languages and sports, in addition to the, the real uh, core uh, courses of the master. Our students also benefit from hands-on experience via in particular their internships. Since it is a two-year program, so you have to um, uh, carry out two internships after the first year and after the second year, which uh, leads to uh, an incredible experience, both to corporate, but also to research work because internship can also be uh, conducted within a research laboratory. Um, in the Master Economics for Smart Cities and Planet Policy, we have also an experience uh, with Capstone Project, but I shall return to it uh, later. But I 
talk about uh, Capstone here because it's um, really uh, industry and um, uh, and uh, similar to in internships within the, the, the program. So we have a very close industry collaboration. We also invite a professional from the uh, sector uh, to uh, carry out scientific conference. Uh, we also organize company visits and uh, we developed individual and team projects with our partners and uh, I will uh, uh, develop that a little bit more in a few minutes. So we can uh, go to the next slide, please. So I'm gonna uh, explain in more details uh, the master that I am the academic director of at Ecole Technique, which is called Economics for Smart Cities and Climate Policy. So this, uh, this master uh, really comes from um, the, the, the main idea we have with, uh, with this master is really to train uh, and to equip students with the know-how to navigate the current uh, uh, trends shaping the 21st century uh, cities and metropolitan areas. Uh, and um, basically, uh, we um, uh, want to um, uh, involve uh, both uh, advanced quantitative methods and the study of uh, innovative and transforming uh, metropolitan areas within a highly competitive environment faced with profound uh, changes in terms of climate changes, technology changes, and uh, social and environmental changes uh, more generally. So the courses are uh, organized with general classes in economics, but, uh, which gives the basic uh, quantitative uh, um, uh, training uh, for our students, but also, of course, courses applied to urban context and policies in uh, cities. Um, as I've already mentioned, um, uh, in both year one and, and year two, um, uh, students uh, have to uh, carry out an internship, but they also, uh, within the, the, the main courses of the program, have to develop uh, projects, uh, which is uh, uh, also uh, an opportunity to develop experiment-based learning and to be in, in cooperation uh, either with uh, industry professionals or with uh, research professionals. There is a specificity uh, in the um, program Economics for Smart Cities and Climate Policy in the form of the Capstone Project, which is a course with ECTS, and it's, this course is carried out both in year one and in year two. What uh, is this project about? It is a scientific study that students have to uh, realize on the climate and sustainable action plan of a partner institution, which can be the city of Paris, which can be the Région de France, for instance, that is uh, uh, public institutional partners, but it can also be conducted uh, in partnership with a private company, for instance, Origin Earth, which is a smart-up, uh, specialized in uh, providing uh, that data in particular on uh, carbon and uh, and meteorological and um, uh, emissions uh, measures. So the capstone project basically is um, is an, an applied master thesis conducted uh, both with an academic supervisor and uh, a professional supervisor from our partner. So we can uh, go to the next slide, please. To give you an example of the, the subjects that were uh, analyzed uh, with our students uh, since the beginning of the master, uh, we have three main uh, big pillars of the climate and sustainable action plans of our partners, mobility and energy, biodiversity, agriculture, sports, health and waste, and buildings, sustainable development, ESG factors, or uh, even uh, fake news. So you see that the list of subjects is very, uh, um, is very wide. Uh, from uh, CO2 and mobility policy to carbon pricing, the comparison of uh, uh, e-shops versus uh, local, local shops, the policy to reduce plastic, food waste, urban agriculture, uh, the weighting of uh, sustainable development goals, and also more generally, uh, sustainable finance or retrofitting subsidies. So we, 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 we aim at covering uh, all those dimensions of climate and su sustainable action plans and provide our students with a real life experience because uh, those capstone projects, their, their goal is really both to carry out a scientific study with uh, real data, uh, but also to provide policy advice 
for uh, the, dec the decision maker, either at the public institution like the city of Paris or uh, at the private uh, institution uh, or the companies. We can go to the next slide, please. Uh, so how is uh, structured the program? So for the first year of uh, training, uh, you have three periods of trainings, two periods of courses and one period of internship. So the first period, uh, students have to carry out a, a list of monetary uh, courses and workshops. Mostly the, the, the main thematic of the courses are urban economics, environmental economics, but also econometrics because we, we want students to be able to use quantitative analysis to, uh, in an applied context, applied to smart cities. In the period two, same kind of structure, we have monetary courses on traffic and transportation and, and applied econometrics, but we also introduce elective courses uh, and management courses um, uh, that students, to, to allow students also to have a, a wider um, a training on a wider uh, number of subjects ranging from digital economics, biodiversity, development and sustainability to technology, uh, startup or entrepreneurship courses. And we have uh, the same kind of structure in year two with monetary and, uh, and elective courses on uh, urban services, transportation, um, public policies, energy sectors, um, and so on. And the last period is uh, devoted to internships. We can uh, go to the next slide, please. The uh, main advantage of the uh, training that we offer at Ecole Polytechnique is our partnerships with industri industrial uh, leaders of their sectors, but also with industri institutional uh, uh, in uh, partners. For instance, we have uh, research and uh, teaching chairs at Ecole Polytechnique focusing on uh, energy and prosperity, sustainable finance and responsible investment. And this gives the capacity for our students to be in contact in close relationships with professionals from those companies uh, that helps them to find interesting um, uh, and specific uh, internships, but also to develop a, a research oriented uh, project uh, um, in case uh, students uh, have this uh, um, desire and opportunity. So we can go to the next slide. So what happens after graduation? Uh, so so the, the Economics for Smart Cities and Climate Policy Program is really tailored for students who want to uh, uh, be trained on uh, quantitative economics and apply uh, those methods to um, urban and uh, smart cities uh, um, studies. And so they can pursue careers as executives or economic advisors both uh, within public institutions and private institutions. So there are a, a large variety of uh, uh, careers and of uh, jobs available. Uh, in particular, uh, many managerial positions in industries um, focusing on transportation, energy, environmental, commercial real estate, urban and infrastructure management and services, but also um, there are careers um, for economic advisory positions at the city of Paris within international organizations like the OECD or, or the World Bank, or of course consultancy positions uh, in the in the various industries covered by the master. We can go to the next slide. So who can uh, apply? Uh, we are uh, focusing on uh, uh, recruiting students holding a bachelor degrees, which is a, a license in the, in the French uh, university system in economics, mathematics, civil engineering and transportation studies, or uh, the equivalent of French engineering uh, uh, degree. But of course, applicants from uh, many other educational backgrounds can uh, and should also uh, be considered and should not re refrain themselves, provided that they have uh, uh, some skills and familiarities with the, with the subjects that I've just mentioned in terms of economics, mathematics, and engineering uh, um, disciplines. So now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the floor to... Uh, uh, two uh, emblematic students of, uh, of, the, of the masters that, that have had the, the opportunity to uh, participate in a, 
uh, specific uh, uh, event uh, uh, within the master that I've not mentioned, but I, I will let them explain that. But in 2022, Ecole Polytechnique has been granted the status of observers at the United Nations uh, Conference of the Parties. And so uh, uh, we have had uh, this incredible opportunity to uh, to participate at COP27 in Egypt, but I let uh, Natalia and Katia the, the floor to, to uh, testify a, a little bit more of their experience as a student of the Master of Economics for Smart Cities and Climate Policy. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Patricia. So uh, my name is Natalia. I'm going to start maybe with why Polytechnique in general and then move to why our program. So as it was already stated, Polytechnique has a great campus life from a student perspective. Not only do we have the best professors and industry leaders involved in all of our classes, but you can actually have this very unique experience especially when it comes to like European universities, because it is really a technology and research hub in here, uh, full of life, full of sports, full of humanities classes, as well as uh, for international student great French culture integration. So this is definitely something that if you're considering the program, you should take into account. Why smart cities program? I would say that first of all, it combines perfectly two different backgrounds of people. And students enrolled in this program are uh, having very diverse backgrounds because from one hand, this is engineering, from the other, it's economics or finance. And so when we're being put together in one group, we can not only learn from our professors, but also from each other because we have very different experiences, not only work-wise, but also school-wise. And therefore, uh, as our courses are very uh, diverse as well. Some of them require more of an engineering knowledge, some of them more economics. It's a great mix and a great way to learn uh, from each other and develop other competencies, sometimes competencies that you would not even think that you would need them in, your, in the real life. And suddenly uh, your point of view is being changed. So uh, I would say there is that. Uh, a huge advantage of our program is also the capstone project that uh, Mrs. Kripo mentioned, because it's very hands-on. We collaborate with industry leaders, as well as, for instance, um, the city of Paris. So we're working on real projects with real data, with real life impacting uh, results. So yeah, that's from my side, a very quick um, recap. Thank you so much, Natalia. All right, can everybody hear me all right? Yeah, good. Um, so yes, my name is Ekaterina. So quickly, I'm, uh, I'm an American um, from New York City. My background was in finance and international security. So um, why did I choose Equal Polytechnique? Um, I chose it because of its reputation. Uh, it's rigor, it's strong alumni base and networking capacity, which I'm happy to, to say is absolutely true. And also because I was looking for a more technically oriented master's degree. So as I said, having a background in finance and political science, I wanted to do a program in an engineering school, knowing that I would be able to leverage the mathematical and scientific excellence of this university and gain a, a more competitive skill set. And also I chose it because it was in Paris, uh, or 20 kilometers away from Paris, but it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> and um, so moving on to this program specifically and what I appreciate about it. Um, well, I, I really like the structure. So um, I like that we study for half of the year and then we have to do the mandatory internship, whether or not you have work experience. I mean, within our cohort, there are people who have, have substantial work experience and others like myself who went straight from their bachelor's studies into this master's. Depending where you fall on this scale, it still adds a nice dimensionality to, to your degree and helps complement the studies that you are, you are pursuing. As well as in my case, it helped solidify uh, that I um, what I want to do and then confirm that um, I would like to stay and work in France after I graduate from that. So on that note, as an American or as any international student, it's helpful for understanding the logistics, the, the job search process, learning about what opportunities you have in France and, and helping your, your integration. 
Also, what else I like about this program is that you do undertake quite some research in this program, but uh, so for example, the, the master's thesis you do each year as well as within your classes, uh, but it's diverse and very applied and it personally helped to me discover a, a love for research, which I might have not identified without this program. And uh, lastly, of course, um, Natalia and I both had the opportunity to go to COP27 in Egypt in November, which is an absolutely amazing opportunity. Um, which we thank uh, Madame Pico for organizing because it was a uh, very, very unique. And um, personally, I'm very interested in policy. I did my internship at the OECD last summer. So it was really wonderful to actually see some of the work that I had done presented at, at, at COP and also just understand the way these, um, these conferences go and have the perspective of a student uh, in, this, in this field attending one of the highest level Kind of events around around climate policy. So, uh, to say the least, that was that was really an incredible experience. And then uh, moving on to, if I'd recommend uh, this program to to my peers, uh, definitely I I want to say also that we are a very diverse cohort, which absolutely adds to its strength as a whole and um, the ability that we've had to learn from each other. And um, for those who have a learning curve coming in, as I did, um, I didn't really study economics. I did take a macro micro class, but that was pretty much it. Um, you know, with some extra work, I had no problem succeeding. And um, so don't be discouraged to apply if you don't have an absolutely fundamental economics or engineering background, as Madame Pifo said. Um, there are definitely other skills that will be important to leverage within this training. And um, of course, this master's is very relevant, uh, whether your interests are in private or public sector, research, business, engineering, urban policy, climate policy, monetary policy, um, you really benefit from a multidisciplinary training. And through the thesis and internships, as well as the opportunity to pick electives, you have the flexibility to kind of go down your personal path and, and shape how you want to take what you're learning um, your, you know, for yourself. And uh, maybe also I'll just quickly comment on what I expect to do after this. So my long-term goal is um, I'm, I'm interested in working in climate policy. My broad intention is, you know, understanding how to develop policies and policy mixes that are effective, but will aid in a fair transition of, um, of our economy and are reflective of the environmental, economic, financial, and social dimensions of climate change. And I think this is where also the multidisciplinary um, aspect of this program has really helped me understand how I wish to approach my career in this field in general. And uh, also I, I'm actually now considering doing a PhD in the next two years. So, um, so that's it for me, uh, but thank you so much again for joining this webinar and I look forward to your questions after. What I would also add to what Katya just said is that, uh, yeah, there is a huge factor when it comes to being passionate about what we're learning about uh, in this program. So, since we're all very interested in climate policy and in smart cities, but we all come from very diverse backgrounds, some of us will be moving on to uh, international organizations, some of us will stay within the industry. And this is a huge advantage because through this connection between us, through exchanging the ideas, we can see all of the different sides of the issues. Thank you, Natalia and Ekaterina. So now um, I'm going to talk to you about the application process. Um, so in order to apply to the master, you need to complete the online application form. So uh, Natalia and Ekaterina did like uh, two years ago. Um, you will need a list of supporting documents. And the first of uh, these documents is the uh, scanned copies of transcripts of all of just, uh, all the previous post-secondary education, including exchange programs. Uh, we need the scanned copies of your degrees as well. And if you're currently finishing your bachelor or engineering program, you have to upload an enrollment certificate as well. Uh, you are required to provide us as well uh, the contact details of two referees, uh, no more than two referees. One of them must be a professor at your current institution or a previous university. Uh, the other one can be a professor as well or a manager supervisor of your last internship or previous job. 
uh, you'll find a section in the application form in which you can fill out the contact details of your referees and uh, they'll receive an email uh, to complete the reference and once done you'll be notified. Then uh, the personal statement. Uh, so about this document, please respect the format that we request. Uh, you'll find a template in the application form. Uh, so a few examples of the questions, uh, explain your motivation and interest in the subject for which you have applied, what are your career goals and plans, and please, please be as specific as you can in the answers. Be honest as well, since it's a personal statement that is going to be read by a professor, by uh, the academic director and the admission team. Um, then uh, STV. And the CV, uh, it has to be in English and uh, two pages maximum. Uh, if it's longer, unfortunately, we can accept it. Uh, so uh, please include uh, your current situation. So what you're doing right now, if you're like uh, doing an internship or you are studying or you're working, um, your work experiences, your academic background, extracurricular activities as well, of course, uh, personal projects uh, related to the program. Um, and uh, please again, explain us what are you doing right now? That's very important because this is a frequent question uh, during the interview, which is uh, in the second phase. Um, then you'll have also to prove your English proficiency. And for this, we require a test. Uh, you can either take the IELTS, uh, TOEFL or Cambridge test. Uh, we require a C1 level, advanced level. Uh, for the IELTS, you will need a minimum of over, so overall score of 6.5. Uh, in the case of TOEFL, uh, it has to be a 90 minimum and for the Cambridge test, uh, the C1 level. Uh, the test must have been taken less than two years ago, so please uh, pay attention to the date and to the uh, deadlines, uh, to the round deadline. It will depend on the round deadline as well. Uh, if you do not have this document at the moment of the application, you can upload a proof of enrollment to the test. So in case of admission, you will receive a conditional admission letter until you provide us the official test results. Okay, uh, we do not require GMAT, uh, GRE, or TAJMASH for this program. If you've already taken these standardized tests, you can, uh, you can upload them as a support document, but it's not uh, mandatory. And then uh, just a copy of your passport and a photo taken recently, no more than six months ago, and uh, you'll have to uh, pay an application fee of 90 euros to submit your uh, application. So if, if uh, you have, uh, if the file is complete within the deadlines uh, and you've uh, correctly uploaded everything, then your application will be evaluated by the admission committee. It will take uh, around two weeks after submitting your application. And then uh, you might be invited, invited to the second phase, uh, which is uh, interviews. And in this part of the process, we pre-select candidates uh, for the interview. So the interview uh, is an exchange. So it's a discussion with uh, the program director and admission uh, and admission manager. Uh, it lasts around 20 to 30 minutes. It's online. Um, it's conducted entirely in English and uh, we advise you to prepare in advance and be ready for questions about your scientific culture motivation to join the program or anything that you have done in an academic or professional context. Uh, we could ask you anything about uh, uh, what is included in your CV or personal statement as well. So uh, please search more about the program, try to contact current students or alumni to find out more about their experiences as candidates and students that can be a good source of, a source of information in order to prepare. Um, so after the interviews, the final decisions are um, take are made um, in around two weeks as well, maybe two three weeks. It will depend on the round, and uh, then you will receive the um, the answer by notification by email. Okay, so. Um, that would be all for the uh, application process. We can go to the next slide. Okay, so this program has a uh, tuition fees of uh, 14,100 uh, euros per year. And um, 
we have uh, still uh, a certain number of uh, scholarships for the second round of admissions. Uh, you don't need to make a separate application. Actually, during the interview, we evaluate as well students and uh, we decide at the same time the admission and if the student will be eligible uh, to a uh, scholarship. Uh, we have scholarships coming from uh, specific chairs uh, sponsored by companies or other agreements. Uh, we have also the uh, Polytechnic Foundation scholarships. So, um, uh, that's what we have from our side, but we recommend you as well to uh, take a look on Campus France scholarships as well that may be useful for you or uh, other organizations that may uh, target students from a specific nationality, for example. So um, that's our recommendation and uh, also um, get information about the living costs uh, in France. It would be around 1,000 euros. That's the average, actually. The um, accommodation on campus would be around like 500 euros. And you can get some help from the government being a student. It can go from 150 to 200. It will depend, actually. You can live on campus. Actually, we recommend it because it's easier for students like to, to go to classes and participate in the student life on campus. But you can also live like nearby. Okay, um, so we can go to the next slide, please. Uh, deadlines. So we are currently in the second round, which is uh, about to finish in uh, February 12th, so you can still apply. Uh, February 12th at 5 p.m. Paris time, so uh, you can still have uh, around almost four weeks to complete all the list of documentation that you will need. Um, otherwise, uh, we have a third round until April 30. Okay, so uh, if you have any question about uh, the application process, you can contact us to the uh, next uh, in next in the next slide. We show the email. Yes. So here you have the email uh, of the admission team. So you can contact us in order to receive advice on the application process, deadlines, scholarships, uh, any questions you may have, we are here to help you. And you can also scan the QR code that you see on your screen and it will take you directly to the website. And uh, yeah, we, we really appreciate to have um, Natalia and Ekaterina here giving us their feedback because it's uh, it gives a different view uh, about the program and I hope you enjoyed the webinar. So we are ready for the questions. <laughs> we have several questions. Um, do students have an assigned academic advisor? So I can I can uh, I can take that uh, that questions. There there are three main um, areas for which students have uh, uh, assigned academic advisors. For the capstone project, there is both an academic advisor and a professional advisor. So it's like a, a binome, a, a team of two, two advisors. Uh, for their second uh, uh, area where students have uh, academic advisors is for their internships. Uh, same thing as for the capstone, you have a professional advisor, but also an academic advisor who is in charge in particular of organizing the defense and uh, giving feedbacks during, uh, during the internships. And the third um, area for which students have an academic advisor is uh, uh, during uh, courses for which the evaluation is project-based. In this case, of course, the, 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 the professor in charge of the course is also the academic advisor. Sometimes it can be also an academic advisor for those project-based evaluation outside, uh, outside the masters uh, in some specific uh, uh, conditions uh, is met. Uh, if the person who is the academic uh, uh, tutor is really a specialist of the subject, it is also authorized to uh, to uh, to find advisors uh, outside the scope of the of the master. So I think I have answered. Uh, yes, thank you to, to the question. Um, would you say that the program also gives the tools for students to take entrepreneurial path after graduation? So I can briefly answer and maybe also let, let the floor to, 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 to uh, Natalia and Katia. 
Uh, I think yes, definitely. Uh, it's uh, uh, it's really a specificity of uh, the MSCT at Ecole Polytechnique is to uh, offer students, um, um, I mean, training but also experience uh, that uh, are really useful for entrepreneurial uh, uh, positions and careers. We have we are offering courses uh, from. Um, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, we are offering uh, lectures from entrepreneurs, but also specific courses in the management of innovation department. Innovation actually and entrepreneurship is one of uh, the strong pillars of Ecole Polytechnique. Ecole Polytechnique has three main pillars, uh, innovation, research and uh, training. And so uh, we also have a, um, a campus and a, a, a we are a living lab and uh, our campus is a living lab. And so we are also interacting both in terms of research, but also in terms of entrepreneurial experience. We have a wide ecosystem of entrepreneurs, uh, uh, which we make available to, to our students. So definitely, I would say yes. Um, and also yeah, yeah. we have oh, just sorry. to add like Natalia and Katia wanted to add it something as well. Mm -hmm. Sure. So yes. go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay. uh, so yeah, we have the MIE classes in which every semester basically we get familiar with all the management and entrepreneurship concepts. There is also an innovation hub within which we can be engaged. And I think there is basically one key fact that would summarize this whole situation. Because uh, Ecole Polytechnique and the Plateau de Saclay is uh, often called as the Silicon Valley of Europe, and it's one of the eight hubs uh, that foster this innovation and entrepreneurship in the world. So it's definitely a place to be if you're interested in that. Yes, and adding on to that quickly, since you are being introduced and networking so often with a wide variety of industry leaders there's certainly room for um, hearing their paths as well as perhaps having a future future network or future base for your own um, entrepreneurial ideas and uh, partnerships that you might uh, go forth with. Mm -hmm. And we also have an incubator on campus so uh, the entrepreneurship center where you can also network and attend to conferences there so uh, yeah we are very well surrounded with the entrepreneurship spirit in the on campus as well um there is another question uh about the application so uh, as the resumes and the cvs are different from one country to another is there a desired format for that application? Actually, uh, the format is not relevant as long as it, it is in English and uh, doesn't surpass it's two pages. So it's maximum two pages and in English. For format, I mean, you are free. Oh, I think it, I think we lost the. <laughs> To, oh, to, no. to put it on the phone. Sorry, it's my connection. Do you hear me now? It's yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I was saying that at the only uh, two, uh, it, it's necessary to be uh, like that the CV has to be uh, two pages maximum and in English for the format. I mean, it's okay. You are free to choose uh, the one that you like. Um, if our previous studies, so Bachelor plus prepa were fully taught in English, is it required to pass one of the English tests? Actually, uh, uh, if your bachelor has been uh, studied entirely in English, no, you don't, you're not required actually to pass a test, but you have to provide us um, an attestation in which your university actually declares that uh, the degree was entirely taught in English. Okay, that will replace the English test. In that case. Thank you. Um, Natalia and Ekaterina, would you have maybe some tips to share about the application or the interview? I think it's worth it to basically play to your strengths and be yourself in the personal statement. I know that it sounds, you know, kind of uh, weird, but I think what makes each and every one of us in the cohort a valuable member of the cohort is that we're very different people with different passions, interests, and backgrounds. So uh, I would play to that side. 
I think Natalia phrased it perfectly. Definitely, um, don't don't be afraid to be to be real, and don't try to fit a mold of what you think um, this program expects of you. That being said, of course, um, there are there are requirements and skills that are valued. So try to play up your strengths and um, don't hesitate to contact current students, uh, past students, maybe ones who have similar backgrounds as you, who notice that they also studied something similar in their bachelors, maybe they can give you some tips and input on how they were able to direct their um, their, their personal kind of, yeah, background towards this, uh, towards this master's. Thank you. Um... Another question about the English test. Uh, I have studied in English since primary school up until graduation and have done the SAT. Um, do I still need to do the required exams? Uh, I would um, I would ask you to send us the, the certificate. Send us the certificate and we will check. Uh, if this exam can replace uh, the English proficiency test that we require. Okay, that would be better. Mm. Um, there is a you can, yeah, you oh, can sorry. send us the test to the email that uh, we show uh, in the next slide. Yeah. Yes, sorry. Thanks. Um, what is the sense of community amongst the cohort? So I think it was Ekaterina that, or Natalia, I don't remember. Uh, sure, yeah, I can, I can start. Uh, so our cohort, for example, so that means our year is uh, 11 people. So we're, we're small, but um, that actually, if, honestly, I, I think we, Natalia and I would agree that we're friends with every single person within this cohort. We have very, very close friendships, but at the least we're all, you know, perfect, like, you know, good, um, how, do you, how do you call it? Good um, colleagues. And uh, I enjoy working with everybody in the team, in the cohort. And uh, I think that I, from, from hearing experiences within the other programs, which might be a bit bigger within the Masters of Science and Technology, I would say that I think our cohort is maybe the strongest and we have really, really great friendships and experiences within it. Yeah, I totally agree with Katya on this point because, you know, the thing is that we have very different backgrounds and also our ages are different because we have people who are like 20, 21 and people who are around 30. So, uh, the age differences are there, but we don't feel them at all. We're very international as a cohort as well. So it's really interesting because, you know, it kind of gives you stimulation every single day. And I agree with Ekaterina completely that I think that we might be the strongest cohort because we help each other a lot as well. So there is a strong sense of learning from each other and uh, asking questions about things we don't know, because as you can see, there is a clash of engineers and economists. So uh, I think it's a very interesting point in that. And personally, I love it. And you should also uh, be very comfortable in such a cohort. Yes, and to even add to that, like, for example, when we're applying for jobs, we're sharing our CVs, our motivation letters amongst each other, even though in many ways we might be in, in competition with each other, uh, but that doesn't ever kind of lend to a bad, uh, bad environment. I think we really try to help each other. And uh, yeah, we are definitely have a synergy between ourselves as a cohort. To add also to that and the competition and the CVs and everything, I think it's a great point because Yes, we're competing for pretty much the same positions, but it's not like a, a very toxic competition at all. It's a very friendly competition because we know that whoever gets the position is simply more qualified thanks to their previous background. That's exactly. Thank you. Um, well, we have another um, question about that. Is the cohort always 11 students? It depends um, from year to year. Yes, exactly. You know, it, it depends on the on the round of application and uh, and uh, uh, years. Last year there was uh, less students uh, um, 
that came to the masters. Maybe next year there will be more. I mean, uh, we are not targeting a specific number of, uh, of, uh, of students. We also um, uh, have some uh, courses that are mutualized. So even if the court is uh, not that big, students can also uh, uh, work uh, in some specific courses with other students from other masters or from the engineering uh, uh, cycle at Ecole Polytechnique. So um, um, yes, it, it depends. Uh, the COVID year were not very easy for, for for all programs, but uh, we'll see how it evolves over time. The program is also very new. Huh? It has uh, uh, less than uh, less than five years of existence. Uh, okay, so I think that we answered all of the questions. If you have other questions, once again, feel free to contact Lily through GD Admissions. Um, and scan that QR code, you will be redirected on a website and get different information about the application process, about the testimonies, so that you can also reach out to students, but also alumni and exchange with them uh, and understand what they're doing now and what they think about the program. Uh, so feel free to, to scan that QR code and to ask all of your questions. Um, once again, thank you for your interest. Uh, thank you for your testimonies, Natalia and Katerina. Um, and we hope to see you soon on campus. Have a nice day. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Yes, good luck. <laughs> Goodbye. Hope to see you soon. Bye. <laughs>